Hey guys, happy Monday. I'm Kristen and I'm joined here by my two co-hosts, Jane Nicholson and Caitlin Belfontaine. Thanks for chatting with us today and listening to our conversation. Today, we're chatting with Kayla Short, a local influencer, fashion writer, HuffPost contributor, all of the above, blogger, and we love keeping up with her on our Instagram, Short Presents. And today we're gonna dissect five Instagram myths that you need to know in your business. This is The Creative Hustle. As I said, I'm sitting here with Kayla Short today. Thanks for coming in to chat with us. Thanks for having me. No problem. We love having you on. We had you on in our first season. It was super beneficial to all our listeners. So we are so appreciative that you're here today. Oh, thank you so much. I had so much fun. So I'll come back anytime. Oh, good. (laughs) So I think we'll just bounce right into it. And one of the first myths that we want to talk about and kind of dissect with you is flow matters. Mm. And this is kind of something that we've been talking about a lot lately in the office because on our Instagram on arrow and not we kind of got rid of the flow of it all so are you thinking like the aesthetic kind of yeah yeah Yeah. so we were finding that it was the content we're posting that's getting the most engagement in the good captions is the the meaningful content (laughs) sorry (laughs) so and then when we're more concentrated on the aesthetic of it all it doesn't garner as much engagement for us well we kind of have to think about the the way that people are consuming what you're putting out so when you're putting out a post they're seeing it in a feed amongst other posts they're not seeing it on your particular profile so it can be tricky to kind of negotiate the two you want a pretty profile and a pretty aesthetic but then you also want to just post what you feel in the moment and I think when you're sort of married to a specific aesthetic it can be really limiting in terms of what you want to share and I don't know about you guys but when I take a photo and I feel a certain way about it there's something to be said about the posting it immediately like the immediacy of that feeling that moment and I want to share it right away and sometimes that photo doesn't match my feed and that's okay I think that if you're feeling a certain way you want to share a certain thing then put it into your profile I don't even know that people are even really looking at your feed (laughs) as much as like we think right I think we feel like we're like vulnerable and naked or something and everyone's just like stalking our feeds but really they're probably watching stories (laughs) yeah true right so I think that there's a lot of pressure and I would say unnecessarily so okay yeah good to know yeah yeah because we've been finding that the engagement is coming from the content and the captions and not you know the pretty bright colors and everything matches I think so too I think that we're sort of uh Instagram has kind of become a little bit I don't know, I want to say like artificial or just like too manicured and I don't know that that's relatable anymore and I think obviously you want to be creative and explore all these different things but like I think there's a line of like too manufactured and and, you know it's called Instagram for a reason it's supposed to feel in the moment and I think we're all craving a bit of real you know yeah especially lately yeah we need to find the fine line between like having something that's consistent yes and and, like on brand yeah exactly and then but still just yeah in the moment and not overthinking it and being like oh but I posted this photo yesterday and this won't match this and I just feel like it can be way too stressful and I just yeah 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 and like if you think about your feed and you know the nine squares and the diagonals and there's like a (laughs) whole like trigonometry approach to it it kind of gets a little crazy yeah Yeah. definitely yeah does anyone really care I don't know I mean I think maybe if you're I think it's tricky because Instagram is such a self-expressive thing and and I think a lot of times people are using their feeds as sort of a portfolio so obviously for photographers and that kind of thing um it represents their work Mm. and they want it to represent their work in in an aesthetically pleasing way um I do think that it can be overthought overthought and just and just limiting I mean we're guilty of it we've done it I I was of the mindset for a little while where the way that your feed looked would capture the new follower Mm. because when the new follower comes to find you and they see the feed and they see the consistency there that would peak their sort of attention and capture them yeah but I don't know if that's right if that's accurate kind of like a 
like a working resume. Exactly, hey? like, like a you magazine. Have, you have like five yeah. seconds to catch their interest. Exactly. But I think there's so much more. I think what you're saying in your captions, like you said, Kristen, earlier, uh, the conversations that you're having, the narrative that you're contributing to, I think that's what hooks I agree. people. And I think um, just recently, actually, I you know invited my followers to sort of answer a couple questions about why they're following me and you know what kind of posts they like the most. And I thought for sure they would be like, oh, I like fashion and beauty and all of these things. But everything that they said was about me. Yay. And it was like freaking me out yeah. in like the most amazing way possible. But most of the things came back that um, about being genuine, about being real and honest, um, inspirational. And I don't know that you can do those things when you're putting yourself in a box. Too curated. I yeah. agree. Yeah. So I was like really shocked yesterday. That's yeah. super exciting. And, like, crying at my, oh, in my good. house. Yeah. <laughs> no. We even find that like when we post about us, it's we true. get the most engagement. Us or if oh my it's gosh, real yeah. moments. Exactly. Like, um, Just like funny things exactly. that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Your heart breaks down in the Sobeys parking lot. Totally. Apparently it's a really funny thing to share. On it's relatable. Know. Our biggest post of the year that got the most engagement was um, champagne pops going wrong with brides. And we did a montage of it. And it was so real. I love and that. And that's what people relate to. Because usually we would just show the pop and oh, ha, it's perfect. Ha. Yeah, but Or like were... it took like 85 tries to yeah. get one photo. <laughs> Yeah. Nobody sees exactly. that. Exactly. So we put a little compilation of all the brides being like, oh, like trying to take it out. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, it was yeah. I love that. that. Well, that's super helpful because we were debating the flow of it yes. all, all week. All so. the time. Yeah. I mean, you have to sort of stick to what you know works. So mm-hmm. if you feel, you know, there are always rules, but they don't always apply to everyone. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are the Rihannas of the world and, you know, you can have a bazillion followers and you're not even really sure why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's different for everyone and everyone path is different and I think you know switching things up or changing things is never a bad thing Agreed. you could always go back to whatever sure. you were doing before if you feel like it doesn't work we're in our heads yeah. too much we are, we're we in are. Our heads way I mean we much. all are we yeah. all are <laughs> exactly so we touched on this the last time we spoke but I think it would be great to talk about it again and see if your opinions have changed at all sure this algorithm I remember asking you this question before does it matter should we be paying attention to it what are your thoughts around algorithms in general um I think that Thing that we need to realize with the algorithm is that it's not going anywhere. Um, it's certainly not changing. But again, I, I think I probably said this before, it is there supposedly to help us. Right. So Instagram's goal is to keep us on their app. Right. That's their main goal. That's why there's DMs. Keep us coming back. Keep us on the app as long as possible. Um, so the way that they figure that out is that people like to have conversations with, with each other and it goes back to like old forums and chat rooms from back in the day when you know you had all these computer games and people would chat and that's literally how we got Instagram and all of these things. Um, but yeah, I lost my train of thought though. Talking about algorithms. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Sorry, I've been traveling a lot so my brain is all literally fried. But yeah, the algorithm, I think we're never going to beat it. We're never going to fight it. Um, It is designed to sort of help curate your feed with more of what you want. So if you think about it from that perspective, it kind of gives you a bit more power. So what you're engaging with on Instagram, it wants to show you more of that. So if you're liking baby photos up the wazoo, you're going to see more of that. Um, One of the things that I try to do, because for some reason um, the algorithm can kind of not show me my friends or, you know, if I like a lot of other bloggers' content, then that's all I see. So I try to, you know, make a point myself Mm. to go and like certain things to tell the algorithm, hey, no, actually, I also like this content too. Um, but yeah, so I think if you, if you sort of know that you can sort of give yourself a bit more power, if that makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. So the algorithm you're saying is there for the consumer and then on our side as the producers yes. of Instagram, I guess, we just need to like lean into it, know that it's never going to change or yeah. it will continue to change it's, and we can't control it. It's always changing. Yeah. You'll never keep up with right. it. I mean, Instagram has an update like every two days, it seems <laughs> lately. Um, it also keeps shutting down. So <laughs> yeah, that too. weird things are happening, um, but some better functions I think are happening, um, you know, with like the removal of likes yes. um, and there's a, a creator profile that they're working on putting that. 
that out. So instead of a business profile, it gives influencers and bloggers a bit more data, which would be really great, mm-hmm. especially if you're taking away likes, because yeah. now we'll have to share that data that used mm-hmm. to be public. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they're trying. I think the intentions are good, um, you know, especially from a mental health standpoint, right. you know, making the follower number smaller for some profiles. That hasn't happened to mine yet, but I know from uh, friends, like the number is just littler. So it's not the first thing that you right. see. Taking Brilliant. away the likes, you know, filtering the stuff you see in your feed for what you want. I mean, I think that we think that it's this awful, horrible thing, but in, you know, the broad picture, I think it can be really great. It's bettering. What yeah. are some of the algorithm, like, do you have any tips for algorithm right now? Like, Um, I think what we need to really be focusing on, and this is again something that I was chatting on my stories yesterday, is that we need to be engaging on people's posts. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we need to do that is because, you know, if we're watching stories all the time and just watching these videos, we are telling Instagram that we prefer disposable content. Mm -hmm. And we prefer to consume rather than engage, Mm -hmm. which says a lot about us as a society. True. We're very passive. So if if we're voting with everything that we're doing and engaging on Instagram, things will change based on that. So we really need to kind of think about our choices and the way that we're behaving online because we're dictating what's to come. Mm. So it's sort of, yeah, it's interesting. Um, And I think, you know, the best thing that you can do is comment on other people's posts, engage in other people's posts, um, you know, share things and just be present rather than passive. I see so many people like on their phones scrolling through Instagram Mm. and never liking a photo, never commenting. And I'm like, guys, some people woke up at five o'clock in the morning, drove for three hours in the freezing cold, stood in a waterfall to take that picture right. I don't know that the I don't know like it's like the respect isn't there I don't know if that's the right word but or comprehension of the work that goes into it mm-hmm. um I think just you know a few a little sentence can go a really long way yeah, sure. yeah. I agree with you so something that I'm definitely guilty of is I'll come across an Instagram account and say they have like, I don't know, 30,000 followers. And I'm just like, wow, they are so successful. They really like mastered Instagram. They must have so many either clients or so many sponsors. What do you think about that? I mean, I think, first of all, there's so much fake stuff online. So my first sort of inclination would be to see if it's real. So the way that you can kind of do that, obviously, is look at their followers and if they look a little sketchy or you can look at the comments to likes ratio and all of that stuff. Um, But I think there's something to be said about being small and mighty because for me, I'm at a really good place where I can actually handle the messages in my DMs. I can actually support the people who are asking me questions. And if I was at like a bazillion K, I would not be able to do that. And so being able to have those conversations directly with my followers helps me curate my content and helps me know if I'm on the right track or, you know, what I'm doing even makes sense. Um, I think also a lot of brands and companies are starting to realize the impact. You know, you could have a thousand followers, but if a hundred of them are purchasing the product that you suggested, then that's great. You know, that's kind of like the micro, yeah. micro, yeah. Micro, micro influencer. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, I think a lot of times uh, people who are on Instagram think they need to be at a certain threshold before they can start to do anything or start to kind of push themselves. But it's, it's not the case. If you, if you have an impact, you have an impact. And a lot of times when you're, again, the one with the bazillion K, you're kind of at arm's length. And maybe you're not relatable. Maybe you're in head to toe Gucci and you're on a yacht (laughs) and you're, you know, going to all these fashion shows. But if I'm living here in Halifax, that's not my life. I don't relate to that. And I don't, maybe I don't even feel inspired by that. So I think kind of being sort of in the middle or to whatever is actually more beneficial. Yeah, it's all about like the community that you kind of create. 100%. 100%. And the trust right Mm -hmm. it's all about trust because I would never want to follow someone who yeah say let's has a million followers and if I like dm them about a product that I see that they're using and I'm like oh my god like do you like that like I want to have a conversation and they don't respond to me radio silence it's just kind of like icky you know I feel that way even with other bloggers yeah so I know how I feel when I sort of get like cast aside even by 
like bloggers who aren't even that successful. And I'm like, you have time to answer your DMs. Like I'm a human being, you're a human being. Like, let's just have this conversation. Let's just treat each other yeah, like that. Exactly. You know, you're not too busy for me. Yeah. Yeah. But that's how it feels. It's almost like a rejection. Totally. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. it hard to market yourself to potential sponsors um, as a micro influencer or do you think it would be easier? I think it depends on the brand mm-hmm. and it depends on where the brand is with their knowledge. And I think some of them think numbers are everything. Mm, and, sure. you know, that's when you see those brands work with people who are super shady and you're like, well, it's clear you don't know what you're doing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you're getting zero reach because yeah. that person's following is like in Abu Dhabi or something. Mm-hmm. It's not Halifax. Um, so, yeah, I think it depends. Um, one of the things you could do is sort of see. Uh, if you see a brand working with certain influencers of a certain caliber, then you can kind of gauge whether they would work with mm-hmm. you. Um, and I, you know, the Amexes or whoever, probably not. But I think if you are sort of looking and watching or, you know, just use whatever resources you have around you. If you live in rural Nova Scotia, go out to some of your local companies and work with them mm-hmm. and find what they're doing and support them. And then also just build a bit of a portfolio of what you could offer so then when those brands do come knocking on your door you're ready to go awesome yeah and another thing we've been talking a lot about lately is stories so the more stories the better and we were just talking about with you how stories can be so disposable um opposed to your feed so how do you feel about the more stories the better for your instagram following i i love stories Mm -hmm obsessed as everyone knows (laughs) I do take a lot of stories I also feel that stories are a really great way for me to connect with my following I think and the same thing that you guys are doing here seeing your face and hearing our voices it's really easy for people to know how we feel and what we're saying compared to just something in text Mm -hmm. Uh, that being said I wouldn't say that a more is more approach is better I think quality always One of the things that I sort of urge people to do is think about how you engage with content. So if you see someone who's on a rant and their their stories have gone from dashes to dots, Uh, (laughs) like don't we know it? (laughs) Like go get yourself a cup of coffee and some headphones because you're in it. Like you're and and I don't know that everyone has that time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think if if the the key. I would suggest is to think about what you want to say maybe before you turn your stories mm-hmm. on, condense it and, and focus on the things that you really, really want to say rather than going on for 25 mm-hmm. minutes. People are going to swipe. Mm-hmm. They're going to go to the next one. We're bombarded with content, with so many things. You really want to make sure that whatever you're putting out really represents what you want to say. And if you're taking you know, 18 slides to get to your point. I'm, I'm out personally. (laughs) If anyone sticks to the end of that, like kudos Mm -hmm. to you, like you're a hero. Um, but you're not going to get a lot of people that do that. For sure. Jane and I were talking about this this morning, actually, how in your very first story of the topic you're talking about, tell them what you're going to talk about. So it keeps them there. It's like an essay, right? It's like an essay introduction. Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then summarize it. You want to think about it like a bit of a sandwich, which is what we all learned in school. (laughs) I always appreciate it when they put a little bit of text over it too. I always do So when you're talking and put the text, because it's, Mm -hmm. I can quickly consume what the text is and go, 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 rather than I might not have the opportunity to listen. For sure. And you're also, maybe you're not listening with sound. Mm. The stats suggest that most people aren't listening with sound probably because they're at work. Exactly. (laughs) They shouldn't be watching. In the classroom. (laughs) They're in the classroom and they're watching your stories or maybe their kids are asleep or, you know, whatever. Um, So you want to be considerate of that. I actually got um, a message from a girl uh, a little while ago who was hard of hearing and she was like, Kayla, you have no idea how much it means to me that you're including me in your stories by wow. including text. And I just was like, 
<laughs> Seriously, <laughs> that's so include like. That, I just got goosebumps. I know. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't. We don't think about those we things. We only think about our own reality, and we really need to be conscious of everyone. And you know, you can think about the grandmas of the world, um, or whoever who I personally also struggle with hearing. So, um, yeah, that was really valuable to me Very for much sure, so. and really motivating to add text yeah. to our story. It takes a long time. Yeah. You will make typos. People yeah. will correct you on the typos. <laughs> And you'll want to tell them where to go. Cause you can like, also write an entire book and make typos, though. Yeah. So it's okay. Yeah. We're there. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, listen, it took me three hours to write the, right. to eight, film these stories, edit them, and then put text on it. If I can say and, too bad. Believe yeah. me. Like, I, I'm just, I'm sorry. Not perfect. Walking example of it. Well, that's the good thing about Instagram. It's real. Exactly. So. What she sees is what happen. you get. The more imperfect, I suck. the better. I suck with typos. So. And there's something about like hitting publish that like that's when you become aware of a typo yeah. like, oh definitely <laughs> what is that phenomenon right. you just I can't know. go back you're yeah. like okay now it's posted i see all the typos i'm like i was <laughs> looking at this text before and i saw nothing yeah <laughs> How, what is that it's life it's life yeah so okay last question or last myth i think that we want to run through with you is hashtags mm. how important are they are they still important what should we be doing with them I think hashtags are important still, also because now we're following hashtags and we have the opportunity to follow hashtags. So um, I think that you could come up in people's feeds if you're using hashtags. Yeah, Yeah. and so with hashtags, I would probably suggest that you combine um, some niche hashtags with maybe some more general ones so that you're coming up in different kind of scenarios. scenarios. Yeah, Um, when it comes to like the bigger ones, you're going to get pushed down pretty quickly. So you do want some niche ones even though they might have a smaller number you might get more engagement Mm -hmm. from that also on your stories you should be using hashtags because say you go to an event or you guys with a wedding um you can look at them at the end of the day and see all the people that hashtag that hashtag so if you're we always do that yeah yeah exactly and if you're a bride i think i would love to see that because i'm sure it's such a blur you're just yeah that's how they relive it the morning the next morning you know laying in bed drinking a coffee looking through all of their images yeah and then you can be like oh that was so sweet or that's so fun and it just like reinforces everything because you're just trying to survive the day when you're a bride (laughs) right it's like have blinders on um, so I would say they're still valid, um, and you could also test not posting them and then watch your post See what tank. Yeah, yeah, it will happen. I promise. You. It will happen. <laughs> yeah. Did you test it? We trust you. It'll happen. No, I've forgotten them before, and I'm like, oh shit. So, <laughs> so should we be using like different hashtags for every post, or should we have yeah. like a gen- okay? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. And the know. reason is is because Instagram will penalize you if you're using the same hashtags over and over. Oh. You can actually end up being shadow banned, which is like the buzzword of the year. Um, so Instagram considers you to be spam if you're using the same hashtags over and over so you want to make sure you're shaking them up and even even so you want to do that anyway just because you're going to appeal to different markets so if you're always using the same hashtags over and over again then you're only seeing the same people Mm -hmm. right so and then every photo is very different too and I'm sure you guys you guys obviously share so much different content Mm -hmm. yeah so you wouldn't be like uh, wedding cake on, on a picture of a bouquet exactly yeah, yeah exactly sure. so you want to change them up for that and then also Brilliant. for the lovely algorithm that we love yeah. so much okay so hashtags mix them up and how many like what about amounts like, i think you're like, allowed 30 personally i think that's kind of overkill okay. i would probably do about half of that okay so like 15 yeah, 10 yeah. To 15. and then go from your general to niche yes. ones. yes yeah. yeah and then mix them up for each photo i mean okay. you can go back and forth obviously like if you used wedding planner yes. on one then you could use it on another yes. but like just not the same block of them combination so not copying yeah. and pasting every time exactly okay. uh you can also uh search online for which hashtags are banned I find this really frustrating and I might have to just keep sending Instagram <laughs> letters or something. But if you, if there's a banned hashtag, it shouldn't let you use it. Right. It should just like come totally. up red or underlined yeah. or something like y'all are coders. I know you can there's figure gotta this out. Yeah. You can figure yeah. this out if, you know, oh if goodness. we can turn our faces into puppy dogs and you can put an underline <laughs> on a hashtag. I, I didn't know there was such a thing as banned hashtags. 
Yes. So it's um, Instagram's response to like bullying and oh. um, you know a lot of stuff with like dogs being mistreated mm-hmm. and women and all of these things. Uh, they've banned those hashtags. And sometimes it's things that you wouldn't even think would be mm. related to those things, but for some reason the internet has picked that word to be associated. But if you don't know that, then your post is shadow banned, which means no one's seeing it. So you could have the most beautiful photo in the world. You could have the most clever caption. But because you put that stupid hashtag, wow. it's not going to be seen. So wow. if you can, you can Google shadow banned hashtags. Again, it's so stupid. Why Instagram doesn't... Just eliminate it. Just block me from yeah. posting it in general. Like, if... If your goal is to make it not a thing, mm. stop me from doing it exactly in, in advance. advance. In advance, not afterwards. And even if it is using being used for malicious intent, mm-hmm. maybe we should be preventing those people from doing it rather as, than still letting them push it through and, and not just, be seen. Yeah, because yeah. I can still go to that person's profile and see it. You can. Right. Oh, okay, it still appears. It still appears. It just doesn't show up in the feed. Yeah, you're right. So that is the backwards sort of approach. No, they to... need. They, I need to write letters. Keep writing your letters. I'm very passionate about this. It's yeah, it's so ridiculous. Right. So um, I actually just got asked this uh, just recently. I was hosting a workshop in Cape Breton for a bunch of influencers there, which was really amazing. And I haven't been able to find research to suggest one or okay, the other. Okay. Um, some people say one, some, some people say another. So I don't know that it matters. Okay. Yeah. Mm, cool. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> I know, right? It's, it's the wild, wild west out there, you yeah, guys. It so <laughs> is. We're just What's all trying to figure it out. You're just on your own out there in the <laughs> no, world. You're just... The just world of Instagram. Yeah. Well, thanks for, so much for coming in today. We so appreciate it. I know all our listeners will benefit from us. Very much so. We're going to go Google shadow band hashtags and make right sure to this. never use them. <laughs> We're going to copy and paste some like niche hashtags and mix them all up. And it was so helpful. And I know our businesses will certainly benefit really from will. you coming in today. So thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. I'll come thanks. back anytime. Yes, we will definitely have you back. <laughs> thanks, Kayla. Thank you. So if you guys are enjoying listening, listening to this podcast or watching like and subscribe um if you are subscribed maybe hit unsubscribe then subscribe again because we're hearing that that helps us out a little bit um leave us a comment and find us on instagram at the creative hustle podcast and until next time keep hustling